Well, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. This is Carly Stevens Books for All Things Writing, Publishing, and Indie Author Life. And I have Emily Fluke here with me. I am so excited that she agreed to chat about using nostalgia as an ingredient in cozy mystery. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into the 90s here in a second. Um, but I want to tell you a little about uh, Emily first. So she is a congenital heart defect survivor. Um, she finds joy and peace in books, which is very relatable to me. She loves to write stories about sarcastic moms solving supernatural mysteries. She engages in and has been published in many formats from poetry, to short stories, to flash fiction and nonfiction, as well as novels and series, one of which I'm sure we'll be talking about today. Emily and her husband spend their free time wrangling two children and playing video games in their busy California lifestyle. Otherwise, you will find Emily uh, solving an escape room, running or writing Magic the Gathering based poetry. Welcome, Emily. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk cozy mysteries <laughs> and nostalgia. This will be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I am here for it. I discovered you on TikTok and I just love your manner and the transparent way that you talk about the you know your writing process and kind of what what it's like to be this prolific in a of a writer and also be a mom and I and I hate that we have to talk about it that way because it's like what about dads and all that but um but you obviously have a soft spot for mom since a lot of your characters uh are busy mothers themselves so i i just think that uh that's very cool and i was immediately drawn to you so now we get to chat and i'm so pleased um so would you tell us a little about how you first got into writing at all why is this such a part of your life so i have been taking writing seriously for about two years now um but i'm one of those people that's like yeah i've wanted to write my whole life i wrote in you know, a bunch of diaries and journals when i was like literally as young as six years old, I was writing in a diary and I would like leave it out on the counter, hoping somebody would read it. <laughs> um, and I wrote a total pride and prejudice ripoff in a spiral bound notebook when I was 11, but the main character was dyslexic. And I thought I was like so creative, but it was really just pride and prejudice <laughs> because I loved watching that movie with my mom. Um, and then of course, you know, got older, went to college, didn't write anymore. And then NaNoWriMo kind of came around and got my attention again, which is National Novel Writing Month in the month of November. And I had a lot of fun just writing some silly, like YA dystopian stuff that I didn't necessarily finish. And this was a few years ago. And then I decided I wanted to kind of try to take it seriously and start querying to agents and that sort of thing. Well, before I even did that, I discovered that you can actually get paid for writing short stories. So I got kind of lost in that world for a while. I had a lot, lot of fun writing short stories and poetry and just getting like five, 10 bucks, 20 bucks here and there, sending it off to submission calls. But that was just such a fun little boost for me to get in and like get my feet wet and work with editors and just the whole process and kind of feel like I was part of the community. And then a couple of years ago, I kind of put feelers out to find a writing group. And once I was really involved in this writing group. I started taking writing more seriously. They introduced me to publishing more and rest is kind of history. I wrote Death of a Fairy Tale and it just kind of, kind of semi took off on TikTok and I've been having fun writing mom characters ever since. I, I love that. I'm just picturing you as this little kid leaving out your writing and hoping that, that people would read it. That's so cute. Uh, so from what I can tell, I, I, you know, looking at your backlist, which is more substantial than I had realized after just watching your TikToks and all of that. Um, but it seems like you did some, some like twisted fairy tale kind of retellings, but now your release that is, is it just coming out now or is it coming out in a week or so? Um, anyway, it's a cozy mystery. Is that the same genre that you've been writing? Or th I think that's a departure from what I've seen. Yeah, so this was, I had a lot to learn. Getting into the publishing, I was, I had to learn the hard way. I was told multiple times and I saw multiple um, 
you know, posts from really prolific writers and that sort of thing saying you stick with one genre. Mm -hmm. And I just was being an obnoxious rebel. And I was like, I'm going to write whatever I want. It'll be fine. Well, no, you really should stick with the genre. So I have kind of bounced all around. I've done a bunch of different stuff. And I think that was kind of because of my background of doing all these different submission calls for short stories. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, these emails would go out and it would be these certain magazines or whatever looking for something specific and then i would write for that so that got me writing like all of these variety all different kinds of genres and that sort of thing and it was hard to switch that off once i started writing books but it took me this long to be like okay nope i need an author brand and i need to stick with it and at first it was like, well, I can just write mom characters. And I was like, no, I need a very specific genre. And I landed on cozy paranormal mysteries because I love to solve puzzles. Um, I write clean stuff. So that was kind of just naturally worked for me with cozies. And um, I also have anxiety. So where I used to love shows like True Blood, the, those really intense, sometimes violent shows, you know, Game of Thrones, all that. I loved all that years ago. And now my anxiety is a little worse being a mom, that sort of thing. I can't handle certain stuff. So I'm like, you know what? I want to write cozy things that are feel good, mm -hmm. especially after a pandemic, that sort of thing. Stuff that's just going to make people like laugh and smile, but you also get a little bit of excitement there too. It is still a murder mystery. So that's where I landed with that. And then of course the paranormal side of it, because I love magic and fantasy and <laughs> urban fantasy, especially like the whole idea of creatures living right next door to you and you don't even know i i i love that it's it's so valuable to have cozy places to go you know as a reader it's i i read a ton of different genres and i like writing different genres too so i totally feel your pain there but it's nice especially after reading some darker things or watching or listening to darker things to have a place that is not that's still exciting and fun but it feels like a safe cozy place so you're you're doing you're doing good work <laughs> by Thank providing you. that for people um so this latest book that you wrote is just full of 90s nostalgia so let's let's dive into that uh, aspect of it first of all why why 90s why did you go for a 90s nostalgic book so I was born in 1989, grew up in the 90s, and I have the great classic memories of staying out in the streets until the streetlights came on and your mom is yelling at you to come home. I was always playing with my older sister and we just did all of the classic 90 things, trading pogs, um, having <laughs> Tamagotchis, uh, getting up for Saturday morning cartoons. We were loved Gargoyles. We loved Sonic the Hedgehog. I loved Sega Genesis. <laughs> I mean, if you grew up in the 90s, you know all of these things. So that is just, I don't know, when I look back, of course, and I'm sure every generation does this, but of course you look back to your childhood and you're like, it was a simpler time. <laughs> it was a happy time. It was, you know, just like that, that era feels like it just, I don't know, for some reason, cozy and nostalgia they just go hand in hand in my head because when you look back, it just always seems like simpler than when you're living in the present. And so, I don't know, I have great memories of the 90s and I love a lot of the movies that came out in the 90s. So that mm -hmm. kind of lent well with my memories of Blockbuster going there every Friday night and picking out a movie to rent or sometimes video games getting popcorn. It's just different now, you know, streaming services. A lot of people don't even necessarily go to the movie theaters anymore. And I miss that stuff. So I think bringing it back for me just brings up a lot of joy. And again, goes hand in hand with the joy and the cozy feeling of reading something cozy. Before we go any further, would you tell us a little bit about this new release that's coming out? Yeah. So Magic Movies and Murder actually released today. So yeah, I'm really excited. Ooh. It's okay. book one of the Bewitcher's Beach Cozy Paranormal Mysteries. And I'm actually doing novelettes as well in between each release. So Be Careful What You Witch For is set uh, 43 years before that. That's the prequel. So that's Bewitcher's Beach book 0 0.5. And then next week, I'm actually releasing on my newsletter on October 10th. I'll be sending out a newsletter with a free 
ebook of book 1.5, which is just another novelette, and it's told from the animal companion's perspective from Magic Movies and Murder. And that one will be called Squeaks and Spooks, which is like a Halloween novelette, kind of very Scooby-Doo-esque, um, almost Stranger Things-esque, but super cozy, of course. So I've got all three of these actually coming out within the next week um, to kind of celebrate the release of Magic Movies and Murder, which is single mom, main character. She's a werewolf. She's moved to this town where supernatural creatures feel safe due to a spell because there are hunters and people that don't necessarily accept them. Kind of think True Blood, Sookie Stackhouse series there. And she runs a like Blockbuster, but it's called Mockbuster Video Rental. She's raising her four kids, which I call them pups because it's a pack of werewolves. And somebody ends up dead in front of her shop. Everybody thinks she's cursed and she has to prove them wrong. I am really excited to read this. It's in my Amazon cart right now. I haven't, I haven't pushed the button, but it's, it's happening. It's happening. Um, so by the time this interview goes live, all of uh, what you just described should be out and available for people who are who are uh, wondering and uh, as you watch this. Okay, so going back to the the mechanics, kind of the nitty gritty of how you put all of this together. Where did you get all of your your '90s flavor? Um, obviously, a lot of it came from your memories, but did you have any additional places where you kind of went to? to jog your memory or maybe bring up things that weren't part of your 90s experience um, as you were working on this? Yeah, so definitely the memories was where I first went. I talked to my sister a lot and I was asking her like, what do you remember? And I also talked to my mom because I was like, well, I wasn't a mom in the 90s, I was the mm -hmm. kid. So I wanted her perspective on that. And so I was like, what do you think is different from today? And of course her first thing was like social media. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that mom being a mom was different. So I wanted to make sure I got that side of it. Um, but also just as soon as I started talking about this book and talking about the 90s and that I wanted to write a 90s book, I actually had a lot of readers like on Instagram and TikTok sending me stuff. So that was really fun because I would get videos or pictures. Um, actually, Blockbuster posted on their social media page. They came out and posted this Be Kind While We Rewind or something. And it was this like mysterious post out of nowhere. And I got a bunch of people sending me that. And I was like, oh, the 90s are coming back. And then I just, um, I was getting a bunch of videos of people like, look, all the styles, the fashion from the 90s is coming back. So mm -hmm. I was really grateful actually to have a lot of readers and followers that were kind of helping me do some research on this. Just sending me all the stuff, all the vibes, all the Pinterest posts and that sort of thing too. So gathering, I think just for me, I'm pretty visual, so getting pictures or videos. I actually watched a, a couple of different documentaries about Blockbuster um, to kind of prepare for this and to jog my memory of what it was like um, and to see what really happened to it, to see if I could make that realistic as it develops throughout the series. So yeah, that's kind of how I did my research. I, I was wondering because I'm a list person myself and so I'm sure I would go down these different rabbit holes. I'm glad that you have people who are so invested in your next project that they're sending you pictures and sending you mysterious blockbuster tweets. Is that there's that one in Alaska that's still open, right? The there's like the one location somewhere. Do they I have think a... it's in Oregon, yeah. Oregon? <laughs> I don't know if they have any information on it. I just there was the social media post which was Still mysterious, I think. We don't know what they're doing. I'm assuming, my guess is that they're going to create their own streaming service. But who knows? Oh. Well, I don't know that we need another one of those. I but know. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't hear about that. So do you think that every cozy mystery needs some nostalgia? Like, is that, for you, in your opinion, part of the genre? Or can you separate the two? I don't think it necessarily needs to be nostalgia. Nostalgia lends really well to it. Um, there's a lot of cozy mysteries that just create these towns that's almost, um, you know, what people are wishing for. You're wishing mm. for this to live in this certain type of town where you're friends with everybody and everybody 
uh, and knows who you are and you go to the same places every day, you know, that, that feeling of just, you belong, you're part of this community. Um, and I think for me, the nostalgic memories of the nineties was that because I was a kid, I lived in this community where I played with my next door neighbors all through the, the whole street. We would all get together and we would do, you know, talent shows in the street for our parents and that sort of thing. And that kind of thing was just, just was the same idea. So I think it just depends on what vibe you're going for, for your cozy or what kind of cozies you're reading. There's, you know, some that are paranormal, some that are not, but they do all have this sense of community and sense of, just people like working together. Um, but of course, they're mysteries too. So even though there's this community where you're trusting people, everybody's got their secrets as well. That makes it kind of fun and exciting. Um, so in terms of the nostalgia, yeah, I think it's just that sense of community. So, and you can really play with it. Uh, historical cozies are very popular as well. And it, you know, I don't want to sound old, but 90s is almost historical at this point. <laughs> if you're talking to Gen Z, there's, they, feel it you know that's way in the past well so. yeah but that's that's if you're talking <laughs> to gen z <laughs> if you're talking to me it's in the press no it's right. it is it is it, it it was a different time definitely um even though it's not too far away in in our memory since we grew up in the 90s but definitely yeah and you know what i as much as I appreciate social media, because, you know, that's how I spread word about my books. And that's how I keep in touch with people who have moved away from me and that sort of thing. I do, you know, long for sometimes or wish for a time before social media and cell phones existed, because there was more of a sense of, I think, immediate in person community that we don't necessarily have today, because people are spending so much time on devices. And that kind of that nostalgia kind of brings up the again the sense of community that I think is really prevalent in cozy mysteries. Hmm. So either you can bring nostalgia as a an ingredient, or you can kind of create almost a new sense of it from scratch. It sounds like those are those are sort of the the options with with the cozy mystery. It's not a genre that I've that I've written myself, so I'm just so curious about the inner workings of of some of these things. So you mentioned social media, and of course that's how I how I found you and figured out who who you are. Um, has it been helpful to have that uh, that '90s uh, vibe as a hook for your marketing on social media? Um, how have you how have you found that uh, to go together? I'm not phrasing my questions very well today. I'm glad you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think I, uh, I think my biggest following is TikTok. And when I had made the 90s nostalgic videos, especially with the music, that's like the early 2000s and the stuff of, you know, our generation that we listen to, that immediately brings up feelings of like, I want to go back when you hear those songs that you don't hear anymore. Um, and when I've made those videos, I think they've gotten the most traction and the most interest. And then I talked to my beta readers and my arc readers and I, I checked in with them because it's hard as an author to see outside of your own book. And I said, look, do you feel there is enough 1990s nostalgia in this to really market this as a 90s book to so let people that from that era or that want to know more about that era or whatever um, are really going to get that experience? And they they absolutely said yes. They're like 100%. I felt like I was there. I remember a lot of this from my childhood. It felt like my early years flashed before my eyes or if they were <laughs> older, they're like, yep, this is how I was a mom a lot like Noema, you know, that was very different. You sent your kids out into the street. Nowadays, it's not as safe to do that sort of thing. So um, yeah, definitely leaning into the 1990s side of it has helped in terms of marketing. And it's been a really fun hook for me to talk about too, because I just get excited to be like, look at all this <laughs> stuff that I remember. And then you get, it, it, it creates its own community. People start mm -hmm. talking to me. Like I said, they were sending me stuff before I even had the book out. And that is creating its own com cozy community within itself. Yeah, those, those are some of my favorite videos of of yours your other your other books did look interesting to me but this one just because of all of those memories it brought back was 
the one I thought, okay, all right, I, I, now I have to, I have to try this one in particular because, because of that immersive sense. So do you have any advice for people who are writing and maybe they want to create something that's nostalgic for them, whether it's, you know, the nineties or not? Um, how would you, are there any additional tips for how to go about that well beyond what you've already said? I think talking to other people that you know may have had um, similar experiences and then branching out from there going, okay, who was around in this time period, who was around living in this area or whatever, you know, um, vibe you're creating. Um, talk with other people who might know about it and then try to get opposite perspectives too, or people mm -hmm. that are different ages, different genders, that sort of thing. So that you're getting a, a rounded experience as well. But for something like Cozy, you do want it to stick to something pretty specific. So I'm not necessarily going to do, you know, in my small cozy town that I've created uh, out of nowhere. Of course, Bee Witcher's Beach doesn't exist, um, but it is in California. So I try to lean into everything I know about California and coastal cities. And um, so it's not necessarily going to be somebody's experience who lives in the Midwest or lives in another country that sort of thing, but I'm sticking with this very specific vibe. So you wanna branch out and do the research of making sure you're getting different experiences, but keep it close enough to where you're still sticking to the vibe that you want. Don't accidentally bring in, for me, you know, if I accidentally brought in a, you know, a really scary character, then it's not cozy anymore. So you do wanna make sure you stick with your subgenre and the idea that you're creating. So for me, it was just, finding everything that was 90s, trying to be very careful. You know, I did have beta readers going, why doesn't she just call somebody on her phone? I'm like, she doesn't have a phone. <laughs> you didn't have a cell phone in your back pocket where you could just look up. I had beta readers saying that too. Like, why doesn't she just look this up online? I'm like, because Ask Jeeves in the 90s was terrible. Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> or your computer was so slow that, no, you need to get the information from the library or whatever. Right, so. or someone was already on the landline or whatever. <laughs> yeah, make sure you stick to the accuracies because I know anybody who's reading historical fiction and that sort of thing too, you will get readers who are very specific. They're like, nope, this wasn't invented yet or you know, whatever it may be. Yeah, that's, that's helpful to keep in mind, looking at those different perspectives to have a more well-rounded understanding of the whole experience, but then using all of that and then kind of niching down to exactly what it is that you want to create as an experience for your reader. Yeah, I'm exactly. I'm excited. I'm excited to to read this book, go back to <laughs> some some of those 90s vibes and and I love I love a murder mystery myself. I tend to go for the darker ones, but but uh, sometimes you need that that lightness, that cozy, safe, happier place to go. So, yeah, I'm I'm into it. Um, so, how can people find out more about you and uh, all of your work online? So I'm still under Emily Fluke Fairy Tales on both TikTok and Instagram, which I probably need to update that because I'm now more into cozy mysteries um, rather than fairy tale retellings. Although I'm still finishing out my Mari Fable mystery series. Book six comes out in January and those are fairy tale retellings. But um, yeah, so on Instagram, I get a little more personal. If you actually want to like really chat with me and see more about my life, that's going to be on my Instagram stories and posts. TikTok is kind of more all focused on my books and my author brand, which my author brand is Sarcastic Mom Solving Supernatural Mysteries. Um, so my other books do fall under that as well. Um, they're not necessarily cozy, though. So just always check that when you're going to look at my other series. They might not be cozy. And yeah, I have a newsletter as well. So you can go to emilyfluke.com, spelled exactly how you'd expect, like a whale's tail, a fluke. And um, sign up for my newsletter there. I send a newsletter out once a month. Um, again, this month I'm sending out, if this is the only month you're going to get Sweets and Spooks novel at 1.5 in the Bewitcher's Beach series for free. And then it'll go on Amazon for 99 cents. So you can follow my newsletter if you like emails, Facebook. I also have a Facebook author page under Emily Fluke, TikTok, Instagram, whatever social media you like the best. 
All right. Well, thank you once again for taking the time out of your busy day to talk to me, talk to us all about your latest work and all of the 90s nostalgia that goes with it. Um, I know that I've I've really enjoyed it. So yeah, um, make sure to like this video if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this about writing, publishing, and indie author life. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, thank you.